Let's make some fireworks. Welcome to this Blender Minecraft animation tutorial where I'm gonna show you how to use the MC Prep collection spawning effect to make reusable animations such as fireworks or TNT explosions and so forth. In this particular example, we're going to create a firework where by the end of the tutorial, you can add a firework at any point in time as well as in space in terms of animation and it will offset the animation and make your reusable preset all without having to do anything advanced with geometry nodes. The way that MC Prep collection spawners work is you define in a blend file your actual scene where you have a single collection or multiple collections that define all the effects as well as animation and meshes and so forth you want to use in your spawn instance. And in this case, we happen to have only a single object, which is the firework rocket, which will add a couple of particle systems too. So let's jump in and start from scratch. In a fresh scene, I'm going to open MC Prep. Assume you already have this plugin installed. We'll go into the item spawner, reload assets, and then I'm gonna search for a firework rocket, which I'll then add into my scene. This is going to serve as our main object for the effect. The first thing I'm going to do is press M to create a new collection and I'm gonna call it firework. And then let's assume that we're gonna create an orange firework effect. That now shows up as a separate collection in the scene. I'm going to go over and delete these other objects so that they're no longer in the scene. We only want this one collection for now. So the first step is to make this rocket fly up in space. And so we'll do that by first adding a keyframe for location by pressing I and then setting the keyframe location on frame one. And then I'll jump down to frame 30 where I'm going to move it up around 30 meters in, in the vertical axis by pressing G, Z, and 30. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press keyframe location again. And then with both keyframes selected in the editor down here, I'm going to go ahead and press T and change this to something more like quadratic. This will give an effect of the rocket starting off slow, but then gaining momentum as it reaches the apex at the very top. We can then go ahead and at that last frame of 30, keyframe the scale once, and then using the arrow key off to the right, we're going to set it to have a scale of zero so that the rocket itself essentially disappears. So what we're going to do is set up two particle systems, one for the trails of the rising rocket and another for the explosion itself. So to create the initial effect of the trails rising up, we first need the actual particle effect. I'm not actually sure the exact perfect particle that would be used for this, but we're gonna go ahead and look under the effects and weather spawner for one that seems reasonable. I think this critical damage is probably pretty close enough for what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and add the critical damage particle system over here. And so that actually created a, another type of effect, which is a image sequence effects, whereby it would have one particle frame per mesh that's added into our scene. We actually want to undo some of the effect of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this instance that was created. And then under the auto generate exclude and critical factor uh, frame over here, what we're going to do is make sure we clear out all the animation data for this by enabling the visibility viewport from the drop down filter. And then I'm going to hover over both of these and clear keyframes from the render and viewport visibility that will ensure that our frame or our texture here object is not going to disappear. This can now be used as one of our inputs to a particle system. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-exclude that collection and sub-collection and click onto the firework and then go down to the particles tab, which is this blue icon, create our first particles and give it a name of rising. And I'll name both the reference slot as well as the particle system itself rising just to keep it simple. And so the first thing we want to do is make it so it matches the number of frames for which the rocket is rising upwards. That is 30 is what we've already decided. And let's go ahead and assume we're gonna have a lifetime of around 50 or so. Going under the velocity, we want the particles to wafer downwards with some randomization. So it shouldn't actually be emitting any initial velocity, but it will have some randomization. So I'm gonna set the random to, let's say one for now. And then under the physics section, 
Let's give it a little bit of damping just so that it has some kind of uh, damping motion. And then we'll see if we want to play with the actual gravity effect. Let's go ahead and see in what we have so far, pressing spacebar. I'm gonna actually set a preview range by pressing P and then just selecting a range over like that. And we can see we have a lot of particles. Let's already drop this down to say 50 or so. And we may as well already select our object for rendering. So expanding the render selection, we'll set it to be object. And then we'll pick the object we already created before, which was happens to be named critical hit. Maybe I'll go over here and rename that to be rising particle, just so it's very clear what it's being used for. And so now if we go over here, uh, we're gonna also need to change the size for which it spawns. So under the render section, let's go ahead and set a size of one and see how it looks. All right, so we are definitely getting some particles and they're certainly spreading out a little bit, which is more or less what we want. Uh, we want to add some, let's actually first make it a little bit smaller. So more like 0.5 looks about right to me. And then we're gonna add some rotation so that it looks a little bit more varied. Now in the actual game in Minecraft, all the particles would face directly towards the camera as a billboard texture. You don't really have an easy way to do that in the particle systems here in Blender. So we're just gonna randomize it. This is maybe an area where using geometry nodes could get you a little bit more of an accurate effect. And so toggling overlays or by using the key over here, we can see how it's looking so far. And indeed we get some rising particles, which looks pretty nice. They all disappear at kind of a set point in time. So I may increase the randomness over here, maybe decrease the lifetime a little bit more and just see how that looks. Nice to have them a little bit more varied. And there we have it, a rocket which is rising up and then doing nothing. It's a dud. There is no firework star at the top. So let's work on the explosion. Now we could create a separate object to create a custom shape for the explosion. Uh, but for this, we're just gonna keep it simple and set another particle system that's gonna be emitted from the center of this rocket starting on frame 30. So go ahead and under the particle tabs, add another particle system and we'll call this one explosion. And I'm gonna name it down here as well. For the explosion, we're going to set a few things that will make the behavior of our explosion work well. The first thing is, why don't we actually come up with the actual particle we're gonna use for the explosion. For this, I'm going to actually just make a duplicate of our rising particle. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable that collection and then going down to that particle after frame selecting, I'm gonna press Shift D to create a copy of it. And I'm gonna name it the explosion particle, explosion. Under the rising particle, make a duplicate of that material. So make sure that under the critical hit, we create the critical hit and name it white. And then the explosion is gonna be named dot orange. And then under the shading tab, I'm going to very briefly modify the material here. So going under the shading nodes here, we're just gonna add a little bit of an extra color as well as changing from diffuse to an emission shader. So go ahead and search for emission over here and plop that in and replace the diffuse shader. And then pressing shift A, I'm just gonna search for color mix. I'm very lazy that way. And we're going to set a color mix where we set the actual mix type to color. And then that way, once we set a value to one over here, we're assigning the actual color that we're gonna use for the particles themselves. So I've maximized the brightness and set the color over here. This will now be our texture. This way, when we look at the particle, it's actually still having the initial color value of the image over here, but then just applying a little bit of color on top of it so that we still get the lightness scale in place, as well as transparency, of course. The transparency for this one actually shouldn't matter so much because the way that we generated this using the effect spawner actually cut away the geometry which isn't present. So for rendering, it'd actually be better if we delete these other nodes. So it's a very simple shader, no overlap. You don't have to worry about the extra alphas overlapping and having running out of transmission pass or anything like that. So our source particle is now ready and good to go. I'm going to move out of that, re-hide our collection over here, and then click back on our rocket and go to frame selected just to jump up to where it's located where it's, uh, it's a little chaotic over here, but let's let's get to it. 
So under the explosion effect that we have created or the particle, we're going to start by once again, clearing out the velocity, but then really increasing the random size here. So the randomness is gonna be 10. We'll play with that number a little bit. The other thing we want to do is make sure the explosion happens all on one frame. That's frame 30 ending on frame 30. All right, we'll also probably wanna have some random lifetime so that it looks like the particles fade out, not so much fade out, but randomly disappear. Uh, we're not gonna go as advanced of having a fading of the material, so they'll just pop out of existence to keep it simple. Next up, let's go ahead and under the render, we're going to set the material, or rather the input object to be the one we just created, which is indeed the firework rocket. So with our rocket back being selected, let's actually increase our preview range to be more around one to 80 or so. So we can have a bit of a view of our explosion. So at this point, we're not seeing anything. Going back and selecting the rocket and having the explosion particle system selected, we have already set a randomized size of 10. Then down underneath here, we are selecting our firework rocket and then we're setting a size of, let's match a similar size to the other effects by setting 50. So let's see how this is starting to look. And for some reason we are not seeing anything or at least it's not very large. So let's see what's going on here. We have a start frame of 30, an end frame of 30, a lifetime of 50. That should be all working as it should be at this point. We have a randomization of 10, which also should be fine. Let us see. And we're rendering as an object. We are showing the emitter. And the instance object is the, ah, it's not the firework rocket. It's the explosion, of course. And there we go. Uh, so now we're showing the explosion. And there is a lot of it, which actually could be OK. But maybe we'll drop it down to 500 just for, just for now. And so the first thing you'll notice is that while indeed it is showing our orange texture and so forth, much like when we were adding the rising particle effects, it's all from the same orientation. So let's go ahead and add some random rotation to this by ticking the box for rotation, randomizing, setting to one and one. And then let's also dampen the effect a little bit. So if we set this as high as 0.1, what you'll notice is that the fire will go out from the center and then sort of slow down and then fall down a little bit, which is a little bit more like fireworks in real life. And so as you do that, you may want to tweak or play around with the strength of the randomization over here to get such as a larger explosion effect while still having those particles showing up. So in this case, with the overall size and height of my rocket, I'm gonna say maybe maybe like 15 is a is a good size for what I'm looking for here. Eh, maybe 20 actually wasn't too bad in the end. And so if 20 is a pretty well-sized rocket, and indeed they are randomly disappearing after a period of time. So with that, we are in pretty good shape. This represents our actual rocket and the explosion. The final step before we can save this and install this as a collection effect is to name the Firework Orange collection to be Firework Orange MC Prep. This is a little shortcut or an indicator to MC Prep to tell it that this collection should be considered for a firework effect, but all other collections should be ignored. The other thing you could do, if you wanna make it look a little bit keep cleaner, is keep this without MC Prep, but then for all other collections, have the word MC skip. And I'm gonna do that down here as well, MC skip. And then if you're renaming collections, it's always a good idea just to make sure your animation still plays as you expect. In this case, we're not referencing those collections anywhere, so it shouldn't create any problems. So this is now a blend file that I can save onto my system and install as a collection effect. And so the way we're going to do that is if you go under, this will be a little meta, under the effects plus weather section, you have the effects folder where MC Prep is reading the effects from which by the way, you also can change this in user preferences if you want to have a different place on disk than inside of the add-ons folder. But with this actually copied to my disk, I'm going to go ahead and save this blend file by first going to that effects folder. I've just pasted in the path above, 
going into collections and then saving it as demo orange firework. The name here doesn't really matter in the end. I'm gonna go ahead and press save as, and just for demonstration, I'm going to delete the other demo firework I had before, just so we have the one we just created. So now if I go ahead and open up a new scene and open up the MC prep tab and expand the effects plus weather section, we should see we have firework orange. And if I go ahead and press add firework, we can see, and in render mode, we have our texture as well as our explosion coming through nicely. If I go ahead and add another one over here, I can rotate it and we'll get another explosion and so forth. And so you can imagine this is a very easy and quick way to create complex firework shows without having to keep track or reset up your firework effect every single time you want to use fireworks. And this is nice because it works with basically anything. It doesn't have to be particles. You can see we animated the actual meshes of the rocket itself. It would work with geometry nodes as well as long as you have animation input data. The way the collection effect works is it goes through and offsets any animation it finds based on the initial frame that you place over here. If you want to be a little bit more advanced with your particle effects, you could even make use of the twinkle effect and use that as a collection input for your particles. And then of course, you could also have custom shapes for your firework by just deciding to use another mesh instead of the rocket itself for the moment of the explosion. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful end of the year and a beautiful Minecraftian firework display. Subscribe and happy blending.